also has reports for us. Um, I attended MLS, CAR's MLS committee, which is uh, different from the Barry's committee that I also sit on. Uh, they brought a motion forward that was passed that reads, participants and subscribers who utilize lockboxes or other access devices shall use the designated or authorized lockbox required by the MLS where their listing is submitted. More than one lockbox or access device may be used on the property as long as one of them is the lockbox designated or authorized by the MLS where your listing is submitted. <coughs> Barry's already has that rule, but now CAR has adopted it as their model rule. In the pro standards arena where we discuss um, the code of ethics, there were two motions brought forward. A motion was carried to advocate a position to NAR that NAR expand its policy so that the suspension or expulsion that is imposed by a local association for a violation of the code of ethics or other membership duty shall be mandatorily reported to the state association to be reviewed by a panel of state directors and possibly enforced on a statewide basis. A second motion was carried to advocate a position with NAR that NAR amend Article 17 to give local associations the option to require that their realtor members mediate a dispute before they can arbitrate one. Um, one thing I want to mention under um, DRE, Judy covered uh, quite a bit of it, but last year I talked about, and maybe it was January, I talked about an advocacy program they wanted to start, so if you knew somebody was violating a DRE law, you could just call a phone number and they would look into it. You didn't have to go through the whole formal complaint process. Well, last year they received 140 cases, which returned $1,250,866 back to consumers. So that was a good thing. Um, under risk management, the responsibility of RESPA in July will be moved from HUD to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Not sure what that's going to entail, but that will happen in July. And um, CAR and risk management was talking about the uh, Mars disclosures. They said that they're a moving target. They have come out with two new forms that are not mandated to use, but they suggest that you use them to be proactive. Um, according to the CAR attorneys, they say unless you advertise that you are a foreclosure or short sale specialist, the law really doesn't apply to you, but to be on the safe side, you might want to use the disclosures. Um, also under risk management, I'm just going to read off some of the um, hot topics in other areas. I'm not going to get into details, but a lot of their problems were property break-ins, lockbox lock box breaches, theft, foreclosures after they close a short sale, fire insurance policies being canceled or not written at all, energy conservation point of sale issues, out of area appraisers with no concept of value, non-disclosure on flipped properties, REO addendums that change your active to passive, inserting verbiage in your contracts which can be construed as practicing law, Craig's listing of rentals where the per person renting the property doesn't even own the property, and marijuana grow houses which are damaging the property. People are tapping into electrical panels and all sorts of things. So they're looking into creating some kind of a uh, document to cover the marijuana issue. And that's my report. Any questions? Yes, Susie. Well, I'm at Mars. They, uh, did they address the disclaimer aspect of it? I was told by CR Legal that that was never intended for us. And in other words, if you say, I, I haven't certified, mm -hmm. then you have to put that I'm not a member of the U.S. government. The way Gap Hudgens explained it, if you don't use the word specialist, you're fine. If you say, I'm a short sale specialist, yeah, then you need, half a certified you say half a certified, I would think no, but. Okay, thank you.